Hey, welcome back, y'all. Andre Thompson, Privileged Bow Hunter. Um, so basically, what I want to show y'all is kind of my process for making these horrible feeders last a little bit longer. Um, if you're hunting anywhere where there's rain, if there's a lot of moisture, that is kind of the enemy of two things. It's the enemy of metal, it causes rust, and it's the enemy of electronics, it causes those to fail. And those are the two reasons why a lot of times you hang up a feeder and you come back, think you're about to hunt, it's about to be good and that feeder never works, it never functions, it never operates. So I'm gonna just take you by my, through my step-by-step -step process that I've kind of developed over the last five, six years. Uh, so before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell and let's get into it. All right, so this brand new, spanking new up out of the box. All it is is a Moultrie Pro Hunter 2 feeder. I don't need this right now. These are the couple things that, I, that we're gonna deal with today. All right, y'all all seen the Flex Seal commercials. You can, they say you can uh, Flex Seal a screen for your door and then take it down the river, you know, <laughs> as a boat. All I needed to do is work for this lid, okay? So give it a good shake, whatever, and just try to do like a nice even coat. This helps cut down on uh, the rust. When the ru when these can when these lids start to rust through out here in this jungle, when the when the lids start to rust through, um, that allows water to get into the corn. Once the water gets into the corn, and those mites get into it, the mites get to it and they create like this dust or whatever. And then the water gets in there and it it almost becomes like paper mache. It just gets hard and clogged up and your feeder won't spin um, and it won't spit out your corn. So this is just one step in that. And then I'll actually give my buddy a shout out. This uh, was an idea of my buddy, David Gorell. If you're watching this, drop something in the comments, David. All right, so nothing too difficult there. Put some flex seal on it, set it to the side. Let it do its thing. You could probably get away without doing it here, but I figure I've always done it and I've had a lot better success with these. So that's all I'm doing is just spraying this side down too. You may say that this is overkill, but when you've like done enough, when you've like driven all the time and hiked out so many times to hunt pigs, just to have your feeder not work, you kind of take all precautions at that point. All I'm trying to do is create a little protective layer over this stuff. So that's it. Um, the instructions say give it like 24 hours. So what I'll do is just I'll, I'll come back at it tomorrow and then I'll get a base layer of paint on there. Um, after the base layer of paint, um, then I'll do like a sponge camo pattern. That way it's kind of hidden. I can get it up in the trees and the branches a little bit, get it nice and high. So a tourist wouldn't walk by and see it if they got off the trail or another hunter because you know we are hunting public land for these pigs all right so day two we already did the flex seal um now i just got some camouflage oh man i hope this bee does not come over here and try to sting me i already got stung once last month but basically i got some camouflage paint it's flat it's matte it's something that's going to knock down that sheen it's going to be like the base layer for it the main thing is just trying to knock down this shine so hopefully they don't draw too much attention and one of these good old thieves out here don't steal your stuff or cut it down. I'd rather people not hunt a spot like, you know, that I put a lot of work in, but I do understand like it's public land, but the worst, the worst is the thieves, so. And then even, and then the main thing is right, just trying to set this up so it lasts a lot longer. I don't want to have to buy new feeders. And I get it, nobody's gonna see the top of the lid, but once again, it's just one more protective layer. Just keeping the elements off of this, so hopefully this lid lasts a little bit longer. These trade winds ain't really going, so I, hopefully this uh, paint doesn't jack me up too much out here. But yeah, simple, right? And then next, I'm gonna hit it with like a, a tan little, a couple little tan splotchy spots. Maybe I'll use a sponge to kind of make it fade in or camouflage a little bit. And that'll be it. All right, so putting these feeders together is pretty simple. 
everything kind of just plug and play. You clip these in. Hope I'm talking loud enough we're doing this on the phone because we're about to go. Uh, Chris's camera might not make it. So I'm gonna set this here. I got a pocket full of fasteners. <laughs> setup literally takes like less than five minutes their old style took a little bit longer but it's whatever trivia for y'all on subs what do they call this multi-tool drop in the comments if you know i don't worry about cranking down on this too tight but you really don't need any explanation on how to do this part this is uh this part is super intuitive now this is put together nice and easy to uh, snap on the piece that makes everything work so literally it's just a quick connect and disconnect boom so if you do have an issue which hopefully this process that i'm about to show you um cuts down on those issues um if you do have an issue it's just as simple as you don't have to hike this whole thing out you just come in snap the old one off snap the new one on now most of the issues are uh, centered around moisture. So what I like to do is just take, I just take a desiccant pad to soak up the moisture and I throw it in there. I throw that in there with the battery and uh, it helps this last a lot longer. That's a good thing about making your own schedule. Oh. Would you rather just record it so you can get, you ain't got to lose out on that money? I'm here now. That's too late. <laughs> Andre told me this was uh, somebody backyard.
the public hunting area where you gotta really worry about somebody stealing your feeder. On a public place, I would get this feeder as pretty much as high as I could so it wouldn't be anybody in anybody's sight line. Y'all wanna see me tie a bowling for no reason? <laughs> any other dot would do just fine. I do like bones though, because they're pretty easy to undo if I need to use the rope again. I need to find something that's not dead to tie this to. easy day so I'm gonna come back get some fresh corn um, an actual battery because I forgot a battery fill this up hoist it up another <laughs> two feet and come out in about I would say seven somewhere between five to ten days come back out here hopefully shoot a pig I might shoot it from my buddy's porch up there <laughs> We'll see. What we might do is like a, a clip of this video a little early on YouTube and then let y'all, or not on YouTube, but uh, on Instagram and let y'all vote on whether y'all want me to shoot it from the porch or if you want me to like one stick into the tree and shoot this pig. But it's pretty cool to, this is kind of a, I know it looks like a jungle back here, but this is, this is a Hawaii like urban hunt. Um, which you don't really get to do a lot. All right, so I'm gonna dump this corn out um, just cause when we got to it, I bought this corn a little while ago. I didn't realize that it, it kind of rotted out. So I don't want to put that in the feeder um, and have the feeder clawed out. So just dump this here. See all of that mold down there. The pigs don't care, but the feeder will. They will probably be back. They'll probably come and eat all of this up by tonight. And then, like I said, y'all vote if you want me to shoot it from a tree down here, or if you just want me to shoot it up there from the uh, from the balcony.
Yeah. All right, so that's the video in the books, right? So I showed y'all how to make your feeder last a little bit longer. We threw some flex seal on there. We threw some flat mat paint on there. Um, y'all saw me tie a bone knot, get it up into the tree. Uh, so next, what I need to do is come out here in about five to 10 days. Hopefully the pigs will be patterned in to that specific spot. And I may either shoot it from right where I'm standing or I'm gonna shoot it down there. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in. P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E-D. I know you know how to spell bone hunter. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, you gotta hit the notification bell or you're gonna see maybe one video a month. If you like to comment or you actually wanna tune in, notification bell is key. Thank you, we love y'all, peace.